Good evening and happy camp. Um, I need to turn a light on. Hello, I am Sophie Von Ahn. Welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to Camp NaNoWriMo part two of the year. I can't believe it. I can't believe we're already in the second camp of 2024. Um, but we are. It's day one. It's technically day two because it's past midnight on day one, but that doesn't really matter because I'm still outlining. Still outlining book two. So this, this vlog is gonna be, hopefully, part outline vlog and part drafting vlog. I have made some slight changes to the outline already, and I'm not even in the card making stage. I should explain that. Obviously, I have cards. I do have a set of cards that are already written. This is the skeleton plot of book two. What I mean by I'm not in the card making stage yet is that this I'm not adding to right now. Instead, I am putting all of my brainstorming into this notebook. That's typically how I outline. I try to get all the points I want to hit into a notebook or on a page or somewhere that isn't a bunch of cards so I can see overall what I want to happen in the story. This is usually split into different like character arcs, different events that come together like in the fun and games and like especially in act two where we see a bunch of things happen that have to end up closing somewhere in act three. Whatever I write in here is a lot of like this is what I want this character to go through in this book, this is what I want my characters to learn in this book, this is what I want this character to go through in this book. Then once I have all of this I start putting that onto its respective cards once I figure out what part of what I write down in here is actually going to go into the book. <laughs> once I have all those cards, I lay this all out, figure out where in the story it makes sense for it to go. I feel like I've talked about that before on here probably forever ago because it's been a hot minute before I've really been in this stage of outlining where it's literally coming from nothing and all of it's new. Every, every single aspect except for the world that we're in and the characters we're dealing with is completely new so it's a whole new story and it's taken a little extra time to actually conjure that up but so far I do have quite a few pages in here that are full of plot notes and brainstorming ideas and everything that I, I need to, at some point, add to this. But right now, I have learned a new thing for my female main character and what she does in this book, and it squishes everything that I had for her in this book into the first half. She comes to the conclusion that she was supposed to have right before the climax of the book at the midpoint or a little bit before the midpoint. She realizes that this enemy alien species is not one that is willing to be negotiated with and she has to like pivot her strategy to something of more defense or of staying away, steering clear. She realizes it's no use. They will not take any bargaining from us, so we have to we have to change the strap. Have not fully figured out that second half yet, but it does, in my opinion, right now, give the book a little more substance because what I had before I made this decision, it felt flat. It just felt pretty flat. So hopefully by adding this whole switch in motivation almost, I'm hoping that'll add some some more to the story so it doesn't seem monotonous and also similar to book one because in book one she's doing kind of what ends up happening at the beginning of book two now i don't it's it's somewhat the same in the sense that she's trying to find a solution for this antagonistic <laughs> species that is antagonizing her to get them off her back in the first book doesn't work obviously and now in the second book she's like doubling down on these efforts and trying to find a solution to this problem that they won't even tell her what the problem is they just say that they need the humans to solve their problem and they never tell her what the problem is even though it is humans 
that need to solve the problem. They're stubborn. <laughs> They're very prideful. So they do not want to like have to stoop down and ask the humans for help because in all honesty if it wasn't for this one thing that sets them back they would not even be talking to the humans in this world they are so imbalanced like technologically societally culturally that it just doesn't really mesh <laughs> but because of this one thing they kind of meet up they don't want to have to stoop down and be like hey can you help us because that's like embarrassing, you know? <laughs> but so off topic. Book two was going to be very similar to book one in that sense, where she's still trying to find a solution for them in order to get them off of her back, to get them to stop bothering her and to stop targeting her home, which she cares about very much. And I realized that while I was actually trying to flesh out the outline, I was like, okay, she's kind of doing the same exact thing that they kind of end up doing in book one, which she can still do, because that's the only solution she sees for her and her people, but it should not last the entire book, because that's just gonna get monotonous and that's gonna get boring. So I think I figured out a solution. This could totally change in the future too, but for right now, I have found a solution, I just need to flesh out the solution. And honestly, after that, I have like a couple other things that need to be completed before I can really move on to the card stage. We will see how that goes. We will see how that goes. I did this really awesome thing to myself where <laughs> in the second half of this book right after like the midpoint and the break into three if we were to use the save the cat beats as a reference right at that point i leave that entire chunk between midpoint and break into three basically up in the air i'm like figure out something to go between these two plot points so that's just completely empty and i have to bridge that gap between two pretty major events in the book. And then again, right after the sort of break into three in the bad guys close in section, there's another giant gap between that and the climax of the book where I'm like, also figure something out here. So I don't know what I was on when I originally wrote this up, but I am feeling the consequences now. I do have one of those two giant gaps pretty much figured out. Second one though, not yet. Like I said, we're already on day one of this month and I have no story to write yet. I'm going to try and chip away at this a little bit more tonight before having to go to sleep and hopefully I will have this outline done before the end of the week so I can actually start writing. Woo. Hi, it's day two. Um, I will talk more in like two seconds um but i'm gonna put a face mask on so i wanted to come on here and warn you before that is on my face okay cool okay we're back um yeah i warned you you can't even like see my face is it focusing on my face um not sure that is a slightly better angle hello um it is not like that i put green all over my face it's fine um anyways it's my redemption arc it's time for my redemption arc okay because I think I figured out the plot. <laughs> Not entirely. There's still like holes that I need to patch up. But the second half of the book, how yesterday I was talking about how I did not know what I was going to do with that at all. I know what I'm doing with it now. <laughs> I figured this out at work. I literally, it was so good in the moment that I literally wrote, I am a genius. I am dot 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 a genius. You can't read that. I, I understand you're not to trust me. That does say I am a genius because down here I figured out how my female main character's arc in this book. What is my hamster doing? I gotta turn off the light. Now we look even spookier. I apologize. Anyways, I figured out how my main character's, one of my main character's arcs can fit in to the overall story more solidly. Like I said yesterday, in the beginning, she's still trying to help these people. She's trying to find a solution for these people to use it as leverage, as like a bargaining tool um, against this alien uh, species. And I figured out both the lengths she goes to try and figure that out. 
um, which I'll get into that later, but the lengths she goes to try and find a solution for these people that she does not like, that she is f in fear of, essentially. The lengths she goes, and also the conclusion to that sort of mindset, and her switch towards the midpoint, where she realizes that people are not people that are willing to be bargained with. And that's that's this little chunk down here where she finds out what happened to a different species that it was in the same predicament as her and the other humans in this story are in. And it just, it really tied everything together for me. I didn't even, this, this chunk at the end where we see the ruins of the society that she has been searching for the entire book, that came to me, this, this whole sequence, this whole thing came to me in like five minutes. I had no clue. This morning, I had no clue how I was going to fix this arc and figure it out and tie it into the story and make it interesting. And in the span of like five, ten minutes, I have it figured out. I love, I love the writing process. It's super uh, consistent and awesome. Not that I am ungrateful. I'm very glad that I figured this out. Essentially, her sort of I keep saying arc because that's kind of what it is. It's just her development in the beginning half of the story. This is what she goes through before the midpoint, um, before the twist, where she finally realizes the truth. And then before she can act on the truth, her world gets like pulled out from under her. You know how it is. We all write books here. <laughs> but I figured that out today. Thank the Lord. And speaking on the lengths, that she would go to um, try and find this solution, to try and get this enemy alien species off of her back and away from her people. Um, she ends up <laughs> eating a part of another alien, um, a sentient alien, okay? This isn't like eating cow or something. This is another civilization. She takes a piece of one of these aliens and eats it because these aliens store knowledge and memory in every part of their body. I think if you watched my world building video about this project, you would know kind of what I'm talking about. I'll, I'll link it, but it, the, their memories are literally stored in their flesh and she ends up consuming this flesh to try and gain some of the knowledge that this alien held. Um, so ritualistic cannibalism has been added to this world. I've been watching a lot about cannibalism lately, which is not probably good for me, but it has given me this idea where this culture of aliens eats their dead to pass on their memories. Because literally it's in their biology, that's, that's how they store their memories. If you eat them, you get their memories. <laughs> So that's been added to this world. That's a part of the lore now. Isn't that exciting? Um, but yeah, my main character ends up eating them too. Not not a whole body. Just a little, just a little like thing. Is that gross? Yes. Um, but you know what? I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. But anyways, with that being said, with that conclusion, my face looks insane now because like half of it's dry and the rest isn't. It's fine. I have checked off my entire to-do list. It's completely done. It's completely X'd out. That doesn't mean everything is perfectly clear on here. I will have to wait until it's on cards to actually know what holes I need to patch, which is what I'm about to do right now. I'm going to write everything that I have in this notebook, all the valuable plot pieces that weren't just questions and me sighing on the page pretty much. I'm gonna put them on the cards and we're gonna organize it into the actual plot and figure out how much of the story I actually have complete and what else I have to do tonight. I'm finishing it tonight. It's gonna get done tonight. Let's do this. I'm sorry I look like this. I all look better in the next clip. I promise. That's a guarantee. Well, I won't be green. That's, that's a guarantee. <laughs>
party people we are back it's been a couple hours maybe since i spoke last and the outline is pretty much complete so close there's like one more note that needs to be uh fleshed out and we're done with the outline and i can actually start working on like my camp goal which is finishing this draft my trusty dusty outline pouch <laughs> Here she is. She has doubled in size. I think it meshes well. And that's why I do the cards anyways. Like once I get towards like the fun and games bit where things are a little more up in the air, where things can move around a little bit more, I can move them around. I can look over the cards again and say, oh, maybe this should come first to build up this new idea that I've found for the story so that's that's the good thing about the cards is you can move them you can move them without uh ruining your outline like how it looks it's a big thing around here if it looks ugly i don't want to use it you know what i mean ugly is subjective i'm aware someone might look at this and be like ew ugly that's that's an ugly way to outline um but to me that is not okay what am i talking about for right now i do think everything is in a good place and i think the order will help build up the story to the end um but like i rambled about it can be moved but for right now I, I like where it's at cool took way too long to get to that conclusion anyways like i said there's just one more part of the story that i need to flesh out this one piece that i still need to figure out is in the sort of beginning stages the beginning portion of my female main character's sort of arc throughout this book where she is still trying to find a solution to the antagonist's problem. She's still trying to find something because she is firmly in the belief that if she can find the answer to their problems that they will leave her and like humanity alone. That that will be the clear end of their conflict and all will be sunshine and rainbows you know so she is working feverishly to try and find that solution um she's very fixed on it being a physical solution like a, like a gift she can hand over something she can show them and be like hey i just saved your your whole like society or something i am your savior here is your your gift she's still very set on that right now like i said already she goes great lengths to uh acquire the knowledge she needs to even start looking for these solutions and once she does have a lead of sorts she needs to actually follow that lead and i need to weave that into the story like what she does that leads to the end of that sort of storyline um, where she eventually flips and she realizes that there is no solution like that there is no bargaining um, there is no gift she can hand over to fix this and that she is probably outgunned outmanned outnumbered outplanned <laughs> I think I'm losing it but that part before she gets led to the end of that sort of plot line i need to figure that out i need to figure out the gap between her finding a potential solution and realizing that this solution too just fell flat on its face and there is really no way out so that's gonna be fun and super uplifting and and awesome but that is literally the last thing i need to figure out i'm gonna chip away at this because it's it's pretty close to the end of the book honestly like look at that plot wise she's she's on this end so i have time to really think about this and and figure it out but that means i can start writing tomorrow finally three days in i can start writing didn't that happen i feel like that happened last nano like nano nano not april but like november i also started on the third i'm cursed i'm cursed to start on the third and now i can't get the clip on top of this outline this is a thick outline. I don't even think book one is this big. Um, anyways, I get to start writing tomorrow. Oh my god, exciting. Um, anyways, I'm gonna go to sleep.
try and fix my awful sleep schedule slightly. And um, I'll see you guys tomorrow with some proper novel writing for once. <laughs>
that night cage the elephant was near me i got tickets like the week before and they were much better seats than i thought they would be which was incredible it was insanely hot it was like 113 degrees out at the peak once the sun went down it was a little better it's probably like closer to like 100 maybe 98 definitely tolerable at that point but at the beginning whoo a little toasty will not lie but it was incredible it was so fun it was it was amazing <laughs> it was amazing but after i was done with that i got home maybe around like midnight 12 30 in the morning um and just passed out and um that's kind of how i ended my week not gonna lie july 5th was kind of the end that weekend afterwards was very chill hanging out with family getting a little bit of writing in I will admit there were there was some writing getting done but not not a dedicated effort not at all and i feel like kind of in that weekend as well i was still trying to push out that scene that was just not working for me this entire week honestly i was trying to push through that scene or handful of scenes that sequence um that it it was just not happening it was it was just not happening but we're out of it rod of it okay that is that is the good thing but yeah that is pretty much it <laughs> that's pretty much it thank you so much for watching thanks for being here thanks for hanging out i know by the time you guys are seeing this we are very very much into the month so how is camp nano going for you this is probably going out after the halfway point of the month so hopefully you guys are halfway through your goals hopefully it's going good i don't know maybe it's not <laughs> like me <laughs> but please let me know everything in the comments and i'll see you in the next one Peace. Wow.